you can open up your Bibles to uh, John chapter 13. It's where we're going to be at today. My name is Robert. I am the family pastor here. And uh, joining me today is Amber. She's our serve director, uh, overseeing all of our community outreach and community service projects. Uh, and also my wife. Uh, so fun little, little tidbit <laughs> there as well. Some of you just connected the dots. You're like, that makes a lot of sense. So... Um, but you know, it is, it is December time now, and it is the time of gift giving and gift exchanging or gift buying for those of you that are like me and you're like, oh, it's December, I should start thinking about Christmas gifts. Uh, now's the time, you got, what is it, like uh, three weeks uh, until Christmas, so you, you've got uh, just barely enough time. But, but Christmas time is that time of gift exchanging. And when you think about gifts, all of us want the gifts that we give to be used by others, right? Like when we put thought into a gift, now if you're just like, oh, here's a gift card, like whatever, there you go. But when you put thought into something and you're like, here's a gift that I think you're really going to enjoy and is going to like add value to your life, you want it to be used. Uh, there's nothing worse than like putting a ton of thought into a gift and going over to that person's house, you know, in March and you see it sitting there on the counter, still in the box, unused, and you're like, oh, I'm glad I bought that for you. And, and I know it's not just me, because I've had people ask me, you know, friends, family members that have gotten me gifts, are like, hey, I got you that decoration, where'd you put it in your house, or how is that thing working, or how are you enjoying that? Be because at the end of the day, we all want our gifts to be used well by the people that receive them. And, and there's a spiritual implication to that that we're going to be unpacking today, and that is that, that God has given us gifts. But, you know, all this month, or, or really the last month in November, we were going through a series called Entrusted, looking at how do we, how do we handle the money that God has entrusted us to. And, and we've been challenged to, to live with generosity, to live with contentment, to tithe, to use God's standard of generosity as our measure, uh, because the truth is that God has given us much. God has been incredibly generous. God has entrusted us with a lot. And at the end of the day, those are all gifts that God has given to us. Those are all things that God has poured out to our life, uh, and he's sitting there kind of like we are after Christmas going, how are you using those things? And so the, the question that we need to wrestle with first is how will we utilize what has been entrusted to us? And, and, and that's really how we have to, as we wrap all this up and think about what's the implication for all of this, how will we utilize what's been entrusted to us? And Jesus taught parables on this of saying, hey, God has given you these things. What are you doing with them? What, how are you using them for God's glory? And, and it's not just about our finances. Now, that's been the focus of the last four weeks, but this is, this is about our whole life, not just about our bank account. How are we using what God has trusted us with? Because God's given us a, a ton. He's given us so many things in our life, and he's saying, how will you use those things uh, to glorify me? And we have a great example of this because Jesus modeled perfect stewardship of the things that were entrusted to him. Now, he wasn't wealthy. He didn't have a ton of property. He didn't have a massive you know, investment portfolio to look after, but he was entrusted with much. He was entrusted with his life, his leadership, his influence, his mission of, of salvation for us. And the amazing thing is that when we look at his life, we never see him using any of those things for his own advantage. We, we never see him losing sight of the fact that all of the things God had given him were for the, the purpose of serving and benefiting others. And we're going to see uh, tonight as we look at this just how that plays out uh, in, a, in a very important moment in Jesus' life in John chapter 13. Amber, why don't you set that up for us and read the passage for us? Yeah, so John 13 is the story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And we can learn a lot of important information in, in the background of this story. So Jesus um, is having the Passover meal with his disciples. And this is just a few hours before he is going to be arrested and then crucified later on. Um, and he is having his last meal before his death. Uh, with his disciples, um, and he chooses to get down and serve his disciples. And he's serving all of his disciples. He's serving Judas, who's in the process already of betraying him. Peter, who later on that night is going to deny him three times. And then all of the other disciples also abandoned him. And so he gets down and he serves them by washing their feet. And you may not think that's very significant, but it was very significant in first century Palestine. 
because your feet were disgusting. Um, you may be barefoot or you may have open type sandals and you walked most places on unpaved roads. And so your feet were dirty and sweaty and disgusting. Um, and so it was customary when you went into someone's home that a servant, typically a non-Jewish servant, one of the lowest servants would wash your feet. Um, most people didn't want to do this job, and so it was assigned to the lowest servant to wash people's feet when they came into your home. And for some reason, no one had done this when Jesus and his disciples went to eat the Passover meal. And so Jesus gets up in the middle of the meal and washes his disciples' feet. And the disciples are shocked by this and don't quite understand it. And so we're going to jump in um, at, in verse 12 and read what Jesus says after he washes his disciples' feet and then talks to them. And Jesus says, when he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Yeah, you know, when, you, when we look at this, it's not strictly that he's saying, hey, all right, everyone take off your shoes before you leave today. We're going to wash your feet. But he's, he's giving us this as an example to serve. And really what it's showing us here is that Jesus modeled serving as the priority. That the priority that Jesus said, hey, this is how we all should be living our life, it is the priority of service to others. And, and it's, it's really interesting when we step back and think about the context that, that Jesus was in. He's, he's got hours left of freedom and, and really hours left of his life as well. And he knows that. He's in perfect knowledge and understanding of what was going to be coming up you know, late that night, uh, early into the next morning. And yet that was the decision he made. And, and I think about my life, and I'm like, okay, if I knew that I had hours or even a few days left to live, what would I do? And, and, and this is a, an important question for, I think, all of us to, to kind of wrestle with. Like, what would we do if we were that close to death? You know, would it be that, hey, we got to prioritize time with family, or we have some phone calls to make, or it's, hey, let's go out for a giant, you know, great dinner all together, and let's kind of party on this one last night? Or maybe, you know, you take the, the cue from the, the great uh, Live Like You Were Dying song and you go skydiving and Rocky Mountain climbing in 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu. Like, maybe those are the things that you do. But, but notice, like, if we're honest with ourselves, I think the temptation is in a moment like that that we focus on us. And we go, hey, what do I want to do? Or, 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 you know, even if we say, oh, well, it's time with family. Okay, but is that just to edify us? I think if we're honest those moments, we become a big priority in, in those moments. And it's not just in those near-death things. I think that's the same temptation we face in life to make ourselves the priority, to make our time, our priorities, our hobbies, our interests, how we spend our time, our money, our attention on things that benefit us. But Jesus here gives us a very clear alternative, and that is serving. This isn't just something that we do once, but, but something that becomes a big part of who we are, that we serve as an expression of our identity and how we're living our life. Uh, and, and this is really a model that he's trying to communicate to us to follow. So, so tell us more about how that is a model for us. Yeah, so we see from Jesus' life that serving is a lifestyle, not just an event. See, Jesus' whole life demonstrated serving. The fact that Jesus chose to leave heaven and come to earth indicates that his life was all about serving and his purpose for being on earth was to serve. And if we are a follower of Christ, so that means you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, that he came to earth, born of a virgin, lived a perfect and sinless life, died on the cross to pay for your sins, was buried, rose three days later, went to heaven, and one day coming again, and you've committed your life to following him, 
then he is our example. And if he chose to serve and lived a life of serving, then that is what we are called to do as well. And being a servant should be part of our identity in Christ. So it's not just something that we do at a one-time event or even serving on the weekend. You can go to an event and, and with the in mind, I'm gonna go to this event and serve for this set amount of hours. Or I can come to church on the weekend and serve doing whatever and then leave and never think again about serving or think about others. And so if we want serving to be a lifestyle, then it has to be a part of every area of our life. And Philippians 2, three through five says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others, having this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. And so if we want to have a lifestyle of serving, then that means we need to stop just focusing on ourselves and look up and look out at everyone around us and look at their needs and how we can choose to serve them. And so I have some questions for you guys to think and ponder about. How do you treat your family? So do you go home and see ways that you can serve and bless your family or do you go home and just think of how they can help you and serve you and it's only about you? So do you choose to look for the needs of your spouse and serve them or your children or your parents or anyone, your coworkers or friends or family? Do you look for ways that you can serve and bless them and love them through serving or are you just someone that's focused on yourself? Do people around you see you as someone that will give of themselves and serve, or do they think of you as just someone that's self-centered? And so, if we want a lifestyle of serving, then it has to be everywhere in every part of what we're doing. And because Jesus made serving a priority, Calvary prioritizes serving. And so Calvary gives many opportunities for you guys to partner with us in serving uh, because Calvary's gonna serve whether you guys choose to partner with us or not. And I'm gonna tell you guys about some events that we do here at Calvary. And you're like, hold on, you just said that serving wasn't an event, and it's not. Um, but we do serving events for a couple reasons, and I'm gonna tell you guys about that. First of all, Serving in these events allows us as the body of Christ to come together and serve our community. We do these events so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus and go out and serve the needs in our community and take the love of Jesus to our community um, so that our community knows that Calvary is a place where serving is a priority. It's part of who we are, our identity, um, as Calvary. The second reason is that we want these uh, serving events to be a catalyst for serving for you guys. And, and maybe you've never thought about serving before, um, or maybe you've served all your life, um, but we want you guys to be able to go to these events and serve and, and experience joy and the blessing it is to serve and get excited about serving, so then it becomes a lifestyle for you. And so the first thing I wanna talk about is the Christmas backpacks that we are in the midst of right now. And I just wanna say thank you to you guys. Um, you guys have been so generous in bringing and filling those backpacks up. Um, and in a couple weeks, we get to take those and distribute them to hundreds of children all across Arizona and Mexico. Um, and so because of your guys' service and generosity, uh, we get to have a huge impact on hundreds of kids sharing the love of Jesus to them. And if you're thinking, man, I really missed out, I want to be a part of that, we still have a few backpacks left out in the foyer, so you can grab those on your way out, um, and you guys can bring them back tomorrow um, if you still want to be involved in that. 
Then we have our teacher appreciation, which is coming up in January. And we get to take breakfast to all 11 schools in Lake Havasu and the schools in Parker as well. And we get to go and encourage and serve all the teachers and staff um, in Lake Havasu and Parker. And it's just a great opportunity to go and serve um, the teachers in our schools. And then we have our Evening of Hope um, event, which is February 11th. Um, and this is gonna be an awesome night. Um, it's for people with special needs and we are just gonna encourage them and love them and serve them. Um, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna have a red carpet and dinner and dancing and games and tons of events for them. Um, and so you might be thinking that sounds a lot like Night to Shine, um, and it's very similar event, um, but we're changing a, a few things up this year, and so um, we changed the name, and so it's now called Evening of Hope, but it's still the same idea. And so if you're thinking, man, I want to be a part of that, or teacher appreciation, you can actually go on our website site right now, I don't mind, um, and, and sign up to serve and be a part of that and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Um, we also have our Serve Our School events where we do work projects at all the schools in Lake Havasu and Parker. Um, we have our Halloween event where we give out thousands of pieces of candy to thousands of children. Um, and it's just a fun time. We have many other events, um, but we have all these different events so that we can meet different needs in our community. Um, and they're different events because also God has gifted us in different ways and abilities and talents. And some of you may be really excited about cooking breakfast and, and that's the way that you want to serve. And some of you may be really excited about dancing with people on a dance floor in here. Um, and so you can find ways that you're passionate about and get plugged in and serving. Um, we also have our weekly volunteers. We have hundreds of volunteers um, that make ministry possible here at Calvary. Um, and without those people serving on a weekly basis, we couldn't do the ministries here at Calvary, reaching thousands of people. And so that's everything from holding babies in the nursery to running tech, handing out water bottles, making coffee, working with students, tearing down chairs and setting them back up, and so many other things. Um, but we can see that there's a progression here in serving. We want you guys to do the one-time events to, to start off serving and then say, I really like this, I wanna do more and serve on a consistent, regular basis. And then hopefully that grows into a serving as a lifestyle where you serve everywhere in your life. Yeah, and, and I wanna touch on something she said, you know, hey, we invite you to partner with us in this. And the reality is Calvary is going to be doing these things. It's not that, that we're a church that's like, well, I guess we'll serve if someone feels like, you know, putting something together. No, we're going to be doing this, and we invite you to partner with us in that. And, and with that, Calvary puts their money where their mouth is on this idea of serving and generosity. You know, the last month we've been encouraging you guys to live with generosity, to live with, with, with service as a mindset with your life now and also with your finances. And so I want to just peel back the curtain a little bit because it's, I think it's easy for us to look at Calvary and go, okay, you say you care about the community, you say you're generous, you say you serve, like, but do you actually? So, you know, we, we've heard the statement, you know, show me your bank account and I'll show you your priorities. So I, I don't actually have access to our bank account, so I can't show you that. But uh, I do have some information from our accountant uh, that I want to share with us. So uh, with this idea of generosity and, and serving, 20% uh, of every dollar that comes into Calvary leaves uh, for mission causes. And, and I know Pastor Chad shares that a lot. Our teaching team shares that quite a bit. But, but I want to talk about what that actually is. So, so this calendar year, you know, we're wrapping up. So basically the last 12 months, that means $320,000 has left to go into something called the Cooperative Program, which funds missionaries, church planting, and theological education around the world, along with a few other things, uh, all under the, the umbrella of Southern Baptist life. Uh, in addition to that, $230,000 has left for other mission partners. Most of these that we've uh, hand-selected. These are uh, mission partners abroad, like in Mozambique, Thailand, Honduras. Um, some of those are state level and uh, kind of national level. Uh, a lot of them are local here. You know, we, we partner with organizations like Faith and Grace, the Women's Shelter here. Uh, we also support uh, churches in the River Valley here. We support our schools a ton with projects, with buying gift cards 
cards for new teachers and blessing them, uh, and so many other community projects all under that umbrella of that $230,000 in the, this calendar year going out to that. As well, there's a bunch of other projects that you guys have helped to make happen uh, on this. Last week, Pastor Chad mentioned the, the wells in Mozambique. He said there's 60 wells, there's actually 67, so I'll add to that a little bit, that have been built so far with, I don't know how many, I don't know the exact number on this, but, but probably over a dozen that they have the funding to build because they're continually building them. There's just a backlog of, of labor and supplies on that. Uh, all to the tune this year of about $107,000 that you guys have donated uh, to make clean water in Mozambique happen. Um, but wait, there's more. Uh, so th uh, the last couple years, we've been talking about our, our Compassion Center in Honduras. There's been uh, about $200,000 given towards that. There's one Compassion Center that's been built and is up and running. There's another one that they're in research of the best place to, to build and establish that, uh, but it's already funded and ready to go. So as soon as Compassion feels that they have the ideal spot for that, we'll be uh, sponsoring the, the construction of that one as well. Uh, there's been $101,000 given towards benevolence this calendar year. That's, hey, let's bless Lake Havasu and Parker. Um, and uh, one I'm excited about, last summer we, uh, we awarded over $30,000 in scholarships for kids and teenagers to go to summer camp to hear the gospel and, uh, and learn about Jesus. So if you want to clap, here's the, here's the point. So the last, this calendar year, $796,000 have left Calvary to go into mission partners and to bless our community and our world. So all that to say, th this is a priority for us, not just with our programming and our events and, and how we structure things, but how we've chosen to spend the money that God has entrusted to us. And, and all of this shows that, hey, Jesus has made this a priority. We, as, as his body of believers and as his organization to make an impact on this world, we want to follow that example and prioritize serving. And, and I hope that you've, if you've ever asked the question, hey, you know, is, is Calvary a good place to spend my time or my money? I hope that that shows, hey, it, it is a good place uh, to partner with us in that. Uh, but all this really drives at the, the final question we have for you today, and that is, is serving your life's priority. Because Jesus has modeled this, the church is called to, to live this out and model it, and, and it lands with, will we then make serving a priority for our life? And, you know, when we look at this passage again, Jesus says, hey, if you, you call me teacher and Lord, and, and I am. And the majority of you sitting in this room today would say, yes, Jesus is my teacher and Lord. But the implication that Jesus drew from that was if he is our teacher and Lord and we're declaring that truth, then that means we need to live out what he tells us to do. And if we flip over a, a, a page in John, John 14, Jesus says, if, if you're truly my disciples, if you love me, if you follow me, you'll do what I said. He says, you'll keep my commandments. And, and so the question then is for us, are we going to, to adopt Jesus' model there? Are we gonna make serving the priority and the, the theme of our life? Are we gonna trust his plan? Are we gonna trust his instructions and live those out? Um, because the, the, the point of our entire Christian walk is following Jesus and his model for our life. And, and I think in the last couple years, we've, we've almost minimized that while trying to highlight it. You know, the whole what would Jesus do movement, you know, it's on bracelets and t-shirts and bookmarks and all these things. We've almost made it so cute that we forget that's the entire purpose of our life, to constantly be asking, what would Jesus do? And then the next step then is to do that. So today, understand that, that God has entrusted much to you. He's entrusted you with, with not just money, but with your, your family, with your, your career, with your time, with your, your abilities and talents, all with the idea that we would use those things to, to serve God and to serve other people. Yeah, and as we wrap up talking about serving, I, I want to talk about the motivation for serving. Because I hear a lot of times people saying, or more complaining, that they have to serve. Um, and this isn't the right motivation. See, um, serving should be a response uh, to God's love, not for God's love. See, we don't serve out of obligation or guilt or because we think that it will make God love us more. Um, 
we can't make God love us more, and we can't make God love us any less by what we do. See, God's love is perfect and complete right now uh, because that's who God is. God is love, and he loves you fully right now just where you are. And so when we stop and we sit in that and we accept that and realize it, it, it changes our motivation um, because we don't have to try and work and earn anything anymore. Instead, we serve out of gratitude for what God has done for us and express our love to God because he loved us. And see, serving should flow from our lives because we want to honor God with all of our life and say thank you for what he's done in our life and continuing to do. See, Jesus took all of our sin and bore all of our punishment on the cross so that we could have salvation, not because we could earn it in any way, because we can't, and not because we deserve it, because we don't. Um, it's simply because he loved us, and he said, I'm, I'm going to suffer, and I'm gonna cho choose to die so that we could have forgiveness and that we could be a part of his family. Um, and so when we realize that, we realize we can't add anything to salvation because Jesus finished that on the cross for us, and we can't make God love us anymore because it's perfect and complete right now. It changes how we see everything, and we can stop saying, I have to serve, and we can say, I get to serve because the God of the universe chose to first serve me mm. and love me, and so now I serve as a way to say thank you to God and to express my love to God for what he's done for us. And so understanding how amazing God's grace is and his love for us, it changes our motivation for everything. So today, as we wrap up, remember that, that God has given you much. God has, has given you amazing gifts. Uh, even if you look and you go, man, I don't, I don't see that much in my life, understand that even if monetarily it's not where you want it to be, God has blessed you with much. He has blessed you with, with a lot, and he's wanting to look and say, how are you using the gifts that I've given you? Are you leaving them on a shelf? Are, are, you, are you leaving them there just for you to enjoy? Or are you using those to benefit others and to, to bless the world and bless the kingdom with that? So, so our hope for you is that, that you would look at your life and that you would count your blessings that God has given you but then you would then say, okay, God's plan is for me to use these not just to bless myself, but to bless others. How can I then go in and serve others as a motivation? How can I follow Jesus' plan and his, his prescribed model for living and serve others? Because Jesus said, blessed are you if you do these things. We will be blessed if we serve, if we give of ourselves and the things God's entrusted with us. So that's our hope and our prayer for you as, as, our, as our church family, that, that you would look at the things that God has given you and say, how can I take these out to the world to bless and benefit other people? Let's pray together. God, we thank you for loving us, and we thank you for that reminder that there's nothing we could do to get more of your love, and there's nothing we could do to get less of your love. Um, God, it's so uh, not dependent on us, um, but it's fully dependent on your son, Jesus, and we thank you for that reality because sometimes we feel like we fall short. And that reminder is that, that you still love us. And sometimes we're tempted to be arrogant and think that we're more uh, important than we actually are. But it's that reminder that, that nothing we can do to, for, for the world can get more of your love. God, thank you for those two reminders. And help us to, to look at our life not from a selfish van vantage point, but from a place of, of serving and, and blessing other people. Because God, we want to be your catalyst for change in this community and in this world, uh, and we know that that happens through serving. God, help us to, to not just see the opportunities to serve, but to, to, to step into those places of service so that we can bless and benefit the world around us, all pointing back to you. God, help the world around us to see our good works and give glory to you in heaven. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.